Welcome to Total Analysis, everything you never realized you wanted to know about a unit. Although Barbarian Invasion had a lot of emphasis placed on the titular invaders, the Romans still had a couple tricks up their sleeve. Enter the Carriage Ballista, a maneuverable death machine that punished opponents from afar. Strategy-wise, the unit works less as a mobile artillery unit and more as an exaggerated horse archer. Instead of flimsy arrows, the ballista's bolts tear through even the most heavy of infantry and cavalry with ease. However, these ballistae almost immediately rout if caught by light cav. They're also extremely vulnerable to arrows. Even slight exposure to a volley will cause these mobile machines to break, often leading to a rout. Well, it's a good thing none of the factions in this game specialize in horse archers or anything. Such fragile but powerful units require constant attention on the battlefield. This, of course, can prove difficult when you're trying to micromanage your enormous army. Risks aside, these units can be very effective if played safely. Staying behind allied lines like regular artillery, carriage ballista can quickly be brought to key points in the battlefield, providing quick, heavy fire. Despite the clear coolness factor, the carriage ballista did not make a return in Attila. Why not? Maybe it was too difficult to implement into the game with the current Warscape engine. It's a complicated, fast-moving artillery piece that didn't have to be unloaded to be fired. There's no other weapon like that in Total War, let alone Attila. Balancing could have also been an issue. Considering that in both Rome 2 and Attila patches, artillery can fluctuate, from deadly accurate killing machines that put Armstrong guns to shame, to luck-based random firing. The most likely theory might be its rather dubious historical background. The fact that the weapon's able to turn and swivel on its own, and be able to be operated by only one person, is very ahistorical. Not only that, but such a fragile machine would have almost certainly had to be fired from the stationary position. Accidents were common. And when soldiers loaded regular ballistae onto a carriage, they made sure it wasn't loaded. Even looking past historical liberties, the carriage ballista's case is still rather shaky. Aside from a passage by Vegetius which was cited in the unit description, scholarly and archaeological evidence of the use of these machines is scant. The carriage ballista was also featured in De Rubis Bellicus, a tome discussing outlandish weapons, many of which were confirmed to have never existed. These include spiked plumbata darts, the aforementioned mobile ballista, and a warship powered by oxen. Historical evidence has never been found to substantiate any of these tools of warfare, thus many scholars dismissed the inventions as fantasies that were never built. Regardless of its questionable origins, the carriage ballista will always be remembered as a tricky glass cannon that was the bane to any unit that couldn't fire arrows at it. If your opponent doubts the ferocity of these ancient mythical tanks, a face full of impaling bolts will quickly change their mind. Remember to leave a like if you want to see more, and subscribe for future content.